Every life has a story, and every story is worth sharing. Your story, my story, and our story speak of victory and defeat, joy and sorrow, resilience and vulnerability. They are not just our story, they are Christ's story in us. They are Kingdom Stories from Down Under. Welcome to Kingdom Stories, this is Nathaniel Costilla. And tonight I have a special guest, a man I've journeyed with for about eight or nine years. Firstly at Church and Christian Fellowship and later on here at Menorah Church. He's a prophetic voice, he's a man of prayer, he's a man who steps up when he's needed. And um, tonight you're going to hear his story. Welcome to the show. This is Simon Parkinson. Welcome, Simon. Thank you so much, Pastor Nathaniel. So journey takes us back to Church Dance Days and then before that, who knows where? Maybe we did cross paths, maybe we didn't. We don't know. Yes, no. I originally came from the ACT. Okay. My family were here. Uh, Dad was terminally ill. So I eventually decided to make the move. Oh. I wasn't going to come. So you were working and living in uh, Canberra? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Mum and Dad moved over here over 25 years ago. What brought them here? Uh, my mum's family were over here and then wasn't well. So. Oh. Hmm. And you came to visit them when you stayed? or you No. Away? So I used to come on holidays all the time, but I was working and living a wayward life in Canberra, in a sense, okay. and uh, just carrying on with my life. Did you grow up in Canberra? Did you? Yes. Okay. So both your mum and dad. Were they public sector workers? Uh, dad was with Bureau of Meteorology, so okay. travelled all around Australia surveying the lands. Mm -hmm. Uh, for mineral deposits, gas deposits. Um, Important work. Yeah, yeah. So mum and dad met in Kalgoorlie and they travelled oh, all around while Australia. While he was doing surveying. Yeah. And then got posted to Canberra. Mm -hmm. uh, they moved there and... Was he dad from Canberra? Where was he from? Tasmania. Wow. So dad's from Tasmania, mum from WA, from Cal. And they get married in and establish themselves in the ACP. Uh, eventually, yes. Were you born in Canberra? I was born in Canberra. Oh, uh, capital city. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Four of us and... Uh, Four children? Yes. Where uh, are you? Uh, number three. Okay. Your sisters, brothers? I've got an older brother mm -hmm. and an older sister. And a younger sister. And a younger sister. Nice. And a half-brother in Victoria. Okay. Hmm. Was that before you or yeah. after you? Uh, before, before my mum and dad. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and uh, it's been an amazing journey. It was an interesting place to grow up. It was quite good. Which area? Uh, we were in Lyons, Lyons in the okay. ACT. Because they're almost like satellite towns all congested together there in Canberra. Very nice spread city. A lot yeah. of parks, a lot of green spaces. Very cold in winter, of course. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah. Hot summers, but very cold winters. Did you go up to ski fields a lot? Uh, no, we didn't. Threadwell? No, we went very rarely. Uh, we really didn't get a chance to go there. But uh, I think we went a, two or three times to the snow. But uh, there's a place called Mansfield too. I didn't know about that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Our cameraman is from Man <laughs> his yeah. name is Mansfield. <laughs> so there is. Yeah. Um, so uh, in Canberra, what, what sports did you play in school? What did you enjoy? Uh, AFL. So yeah. always played Aussie rules there. Nice. And uh, soccer was big there, but yeah. uh, I wasn't any good at soccer. I didn't really get into that. It was mainly AFL. Wow. I remember a time when we were playing in winter. Yes. We couldn't see in front of us. You couldn't see the other player. The fog. It was so thick. <laughs> and they kept the game going. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't see anything. So every now and then the umpire would just blow his whistle. <laughs> yeah. Just to stop the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what else? What was your pastime like? Uh, pastime growing up, well, uh, we had a good childhood, so a lot of you know riding bikes and things. But as you get older, um, there's not a lot to do in Canberra. No. So well, there is on the streets and stuff. But again, as you grow older, you're looking for more excitement. Yeah, and um, I had no idea. Uh, I got in. I was very keen on computers yes and I was studying computing and uh, they were all just freshly out yes and I was very good at it 
This is late typical. 80s or early 90s? Uh, going 80s, uh, 85, 86. Mm -hmm. I bought my first computer. Mum, we all were that given... That massive. Yeah, we are all given $100 for, or help towards something we enjoyed. Yes. My younger sister got a keyboard, electric keyboard. Yes. Uh, and I was into computers. So I said, well, let's put some money in. I was working, so I was working from the age of 15. Part-time? So, yeah, part-time. I sold at school? I was still at school. I was selling fruit door-to-door. -door. Nice. Uh, I was put up against the top salesman, and he was a bit older than me. Yeah. Uh, it was a very quiet day, and we were sent out with the owner of the company, or yeah. the owner, and uh, I didn't realise he was the top. Yes. At the end of the day, we were level pettinging all day. Yes. And at the end of the day, he said, well... I've just put you up against my best seller. And you. And we were tied. Dead even. He said, this was the quietest day I've seen. And you both smashed it. He said, you both even. There was nothing separating you. Wow. What were you cool. selling? Apples? Or? Apples, uh, oranges, whatever fruit was in season. From the back of the truck? Or yeah, so we'd drive around the neighbourhoods and we'd knock on the doors and cut them a bit of apple. We're from Batlow Farms, so, you know, would you like to try some apple and uh, oh. whatever we had, peaches at times. And, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was good fun. Great way to sell. Yeah. So good. that gave, gave you a, a good commission? Uh, it wasn't bad. I think uh, for an 18, do 18 kilo bag, I think we got about uh, $1.60. If we, yeah, if, that was your commission. Yeah, that was our commission. Six dollar Under 10%. Yeah, a $6 bag, I think we got about 50 cents or something, yeah. yeah. That's all right. <laughs> it was good work. It was good yeah. exercise and good fun. I loved it. Yeah. And you were doing this how often? Uh, every every weekend, every Saturday. Oh wow. Yeah, every Saturday I did nice. that. So you started were you were you a saver? Or? Yes, I was. Back okay. then I was. <laughs> I really was. I saved work hard, I worked hard, I wouldn't spend my money. And then eventually you had enough to buy a computer. Uh, so I, gave you. yeah, I, I had it was two or three hundred dollars for a Sega SC three thousand, wow. and uh, yeah, I used to program and learn all about that, and really enjoyed that. Were there books, or how did you learn? Uh, I'd learned through books. Yeah. Uh, I studied at school. Uh, they just had other computers. I think they had apples or something, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Wow. And this, you must have been about, what, 16, 17 back then? Yeah. So when you finished school, what did you do? I joined the Navy. So I'd always wanted to join the Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, ever since I was 15, 16, wanted to leave school. Yeah. And uh, that was my heart's desire. You know, it was the only thing I wanted to do. I thought, great job. Yeah. Tra free training. Yeah. Um, lots of travel. Yeah, lots of travel. So you joined the Navy as a... Uh, just as a recruit, so I was, yeah. wanted to go in for electrical, mm -hmm. but I wasn't any good with my hands. Okay. I had the knowledge in my head because I'd never done electronics yeah. or anything like that uh, and got in, and, but I had asthma. So I was in there for eight months. I loved it. it was, just couldn't keep up with the fitness? Uh, no, the fitness was fine, but uh, they sent me off for as um, specialists. Yep to test my asthma, and the specialist said, oh, you should be all right. Uh, but when I went in, it was 1989 in January. It was the largest intake since the Vietnam War. There was uh, wow. 177 of us. And uh, I was one of 18 chosen to do a thing called Rat Pack, which was a special drill squad, rifle and time in precise arms control. Mm -hmm. It was great. But then they sent me off and then told me I had asthma, which I'd put on the forms, and said, oh, you should be all right. And uh, I thought if I studied hard and worked hard Make up and got good it. grades, then they'd keep me. But then on one afternoon, I was called into the senior officer's office. Where were you? I was in Crib Point, so in Victoria. Victoria, so. Yeah, at uh, HMA Cerberus. And they said, well, you've got asthma. Why didn't you tell us you were leaving? I said, well, I said, yeah, you're leaving. Here's a form. Get that signed. Hand all your stuff in and pack your bags. You're on the bus tomorrow. Wow. So that was devastating for me as a young man. I was 18 and, uh, of course, suffered severe depression through that. Wow. 
Uh, I got home and for a month I was pretty much in my room with mum and dad's polishing my boots. Uh, to this day, if I wipe the dust off my boots, I can still see my face in them. Uh, it, was, uh, it was heartbreaking, but uh, yeah. you get on with it. Mm. Mm. And uh, back then, jobs, you could get a job, but it was hard. I was yeah. che checking everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, went for a job, uh, ended up going to McDonald's. And then on one fateful day before they made me permanent, praise God, uh, I was involved in a serious car accident. In so, Cabra? Yes, uh, we were out of Gugong Dam and we'd been fishing all day with a guy that was a, um, a bus driver, so he was pretty safe. Yes. We were in an old HQ Holden, he just had new seats put in, so no seat belts. I was in the back seat and he went onto the dirt and planted his foot doing 100 kilometres an hour. Just to muck around? Yeah, lost control of the car, straight across the road into a tree. The back door popped open. Uh, I went flying out of the car into the tree. My head hit the tree. Oh. Uh, scratched just above the eye. I ended up in a ditch underneath the front wheels of the car mm. as they were spinning above me on a fence. Uh, I crawled, crawled out and uh, there was a car behind and they uh, radioed for an ambulance because they had a CB and they were sure someone was dead. I used to smoke cigarettes back then uh, and they said, are you okay? And sat me down, I had a cigarette and uh, the ambulance arrived and said, he looks okay, but we're going to x-ray every part of his body. Yes. So the pe people that stopped, thankfully, they took me home to mum. Uh, I didn't tell her the full story at the time, she knows now. I uh, went to the doctor, they x-rayed even my hands. Not a bone in me was broken. Oh, all I ended up was. And I didn't know the Lord back then. Mm. I had a black eye, that was all. Mm. And uh, I was protected through that and I didn't know. Wow. Mm. Yeah. That's and, amazing. And then I thought, oh, well, I'll go to the CES and see what jobs are available. Okay. And I uh, walked in there and there was a job as a pieman. As a? Pieman. What's yeah. a pieman? And making the pies. Oh, pie man, yeah. And I Bastard. thought, I thought my name's Simon. I've got to go for the, this job. I've been called Simon the Pieman all my life. Yeah. I loved it, and the guy taught me, and yeah, it was good fun. So you learned pastry cooking. Yeah, it was good. Wow, that's amazing. Mm. And uh, so you're in Canberra now. You're living at home with your parents for a little while, yeah. And uh, you are um, learning to cook, to pastry cook. Mm -hmm. Uh, no side effects from the accident at all? None whatsoever. How were you dealing with the depression back then? Uh, I didn't even realise. You, you couldn't? I didn't recognise it within myself. Yeah. Uh, what about your parents? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it was something that was really discussed and until one night I was actually about to go on holidays. Yeah. And uh, yes. And um, I went home, I played snooker with someone and then went home and I rang someone and said, uh, I'm done with life, pretty much. Mm. And I, I've seen the doctor previously, so subconsciously I said I wasn't sleeping, which I was. And uh, he prescribed me some sleeping pills. Yep. And I was just stockpiling them. Mm -hmm. And then I got home and I just took all these pills, mm -hmm. tried to overdose. Yep. And I knew that I wouldn't be disturbed at home and I wasn't disturbing work because it was on a weekend, I wasn't working. Yep. It was a Friday night. And, uh, and then the next minute I know my brother gets home. So this is after I've taken all the pills. As far as I was concerned, I was Dying. lying on the bed ready to die. Something got me up out of bed. Mm. Uh, I don't even recall doing this. And I went yep. out to my brother. He was living out the back on the granny flat. Yep. And I said, told him what I'd done. Mm. He rushed me to the hospital, called mum and dad. Uh, I remember lying on the, on the gurney. And next minute I know, um, I left my body. Wow. So, and I was watching from the ceiling mm -hmm. what was happening. And the doctor was putting in a tube plastic tube to pump my stomach. Yeah. I remember seeing my family around and... Uh, 
So you were out, out of the body? I was out of the body. I was seeing everything from above. Yeah. And then when the tube went into my throat, right. yep. uh, I went back into my body. Wow. And I remember the doctor saying, wow, that's, that was the easiest that's ever been putting it into someone. Yeah. But they didn't realise I'd left my body. So that's something what? had taken me out. Yeah. And I uh, brought it all up. Um, yeah. And yeah. then I was just got on with life, but still didn't what recognize. What was the reaction of your parents and brother? Uh, they were devastated. They were very worried about what had happened. And, uh, but it wasn't something that was really discussed. And I still didn't realize that I was suffering severe depression. Did you have a girlfriend or anything? Uh, no. No, I hadn't. I just worked hard. And with the shifts I was on in the bakery, I was working from 6 o'clock in the morning till whenever I finished. Mm. So the first couple of weeks I was finishing at 7 o'clock at night. No yeah. break, just working as hard as I could to get everything done. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's uh, strange in a sense, you know. Do um, you have good relationship with people, mates, friends? Not back then, no. no. In school I was sort of ostracised at one point. We went on a school camp and suffered severe bullying and it was a nightmare. Why was that, do you know? No idea. All of a sudden they all turned on me while we were away and were telling me to kill myself and all this sort of stuff. Uh, wow. It was, it was really harsh. It was a really hard time. So I'd suffered depression, obviously, from bullying and things that had happened throughout my life and not recognised it. Mm. Yeah, I was, I was a cutter from, a, from probably... What 16. were you doing in your social life, in your spare time? I didn't have one, so I was pretty much on my own a lot of the time. Um, yeah, as I got older and with the shifts I was working... There wasn't much social time left. No, and there was no one that had that Were time you into on. alcohol, smoking, anything? Yeah, like? I smoked cigarettes uh, from the age of 16. Uh -huh. And then, yes, I was into alcohol, marijuana, uh -huh. uh, before I joined the Navy, but then uh, that stopped because I wanted to get into the Navy. Yes. And, uh, but then, yeah, I'd later on, uh, when I was working for the government, printing all the checks and things. Uh, I had a friend that was Thai and I was in the, involved in the Thai Lao community and there were a lot of parties, so a lot of drinking and with different people and, yeah, and then got back into marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd smoke that every day pretty much at one point. But gambling was the big thing. Oh. That was my crutch. Okay. Uh, I used to go to the club in Canberra. There's uh, pokies in yeah. every club. Yeah. And that's where my pay packet would go. Mm -hmm. So I'd have enough to um, pay the rent yeah. and the bills. Were you living on your own at the stage? Yes. Yeah. So mum and dad had left. Oh, they uh, moved here? Yeah, they moved here. Um, and you were on your own? Or yeah, I stayed home. Just in a flat? Yeah. So I was boarding at one point yeah. with a guy and that was interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, was, he was an alcoholic. I didn't drink a lot at that time, but uh, I played the pokies. That was my biggest thing. My pay would go through there. Mm. Uh, and then later on, I was uh, boarding with another friend, and, yeah, I'd live on rice, rice and fish sauce and chilli sauce and soy uh, because all my money went into the pokies. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, until, until one day my whole life changed. So were you ever in front? Never. No, you can never get in front. You know, sometimes you might win one or two thousand dollars, but it'll all go back in. Yeah. You know. You... It was a gripping addiction, wasn't it? It was. It was. It was. It was shocking, and you just couldn't get out of it. Mm. No, I just. I had nothing better to do. Yep. Uh, that's what it was. There's. It was a great place. Were to you be. talking to anybody about this? No, nobody really knew. So I just just kept going to the club and pumping it through. But there are others like you? Oh, many. Yeah, many. Yeah. But I didn't take much notice, you know, you just sort of keep to yourself and try to hide it under the carpet. And you'd go there nightly or every oh, daily. Week, daily after daily, work? Daily, yeah, if I had money. 
Yeah. Yeah, after work, before work. Uh, sometimes I'd ring my boss, you know, because with the team I was involved with yes. at work, um, I'd ring, ring the team leader and say, look, I'm having a bit of a win at the club. I uh, won't be coming in at this stage. Um, and I don't know how I kept my job at times. I worked hard. I always worked hard. And, uh, but, also yeah. took advantage of what you were doing. But I didn't even realise. Yeah. Until later on, I reflected on it. Mm. Yeah. That's amazing that they still kept you. Mm. Yeah. And what happened? How did the change come? Oh, I'm eager to yeah. hear that. One night I went to bed. And yeah. I didn't realise, but I hadn't been up to eat for three days. Mm -hmm. And I went to bed that night and I was just lying on the bed ready to sleep. And all of a sudden the whole room lit up. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I thought that's strange, you know, because my bedroom was at the back of the house. So there was no way it was car light. I opened up my eyes and... I just saw the purest white light I've ever seen. Yeah. And it was like ribbons of yeah. white light. And I saw the face of Jesus in that. Yeah. And I just wept. I just wept. I didn't know what was going on. Mm. I had no idea. You know, as far as I was concerned, we did go to church when I was younger. We went yes. to uh, um, Sunday school. Yeah. I don't recall any of it. Mm. And uh, all I knew was Jesus died. Yeah. I didn't know what the next What sort of was. church did you go to? Uh, it was Church of England, okay. I think. And, um, and there were a lot of weird things happening. My landlord lived next door. Mm -hmm. He was a very nice man. He was a great guy. And he had a young son at the time. He was 10 years old. He was a single father. And uh, he worked where I worked. Yes. And... Uh, I remember going there to rent that place. I said, look, I'm short. I don't have the money. He said, well, you'll have to get the money and come back. Yeah. And, but I went back to, the, back to the club, put money through the pokies and got enough money to pay <laughs> the bond. And um, I went next door to pay the rent that day and his son had written a, no a note yes. and put it on the table. It was go to church. Nothing was said. Mm -hmm. It was just go to church. I thought, okay. All right, sounds like a good idea. Let's yeah. look into it. Yep. Went to work and uh, in a spare time, I was flicking through the white pages. Yep. And I saw in big, black, black bold writing, Christian Revival Crusade. I went, oh, okay, that's interesting. Give them a call. And the pastor got a weird phone call. Said, okay, where do we begin? Where's this revival? How do we start it? And he said, come and see. So I lived in the furthest suburb south in Conda, and I went to one of the furthest, furthest suburbs north in Belconnen to this church. I, but, I worked in Belconnen. Oh, did you? At a bit of stats. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know where that is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yes, I was about a 40-minute drive yeah. on a Sunday with no traffic and started going to learn about Jesus, and I had no idea. Mm. And then he worked on me and changed my heart. Wow. Changed my whole life. So... You became a regular? Yes, I'd go every Sunday. I had to. And was the gambling stopped or not yet? Not yet. Neither at the smoking. So when I'd come home from church, I'd sit on the couch and light a cigarette. Uh, the gambling was stopping mm -hmm. because after I saw Jesus, I went back to the club and the weirdest thing happened. The weirdest thing happened. I walked in and all those people would sort of look at me and I could hear these voices. What are you doing here? You don't belong here. Yeah. You're a child of God. What are you doing here? And I thought, what's going on? I'm, I'm losing. I had no idea what's going on. Yeah. I couldn't win anymore. Yeah. Was, my money would be gone in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'd leave and I started, started learning about Jesus. And then I got baptized. I decided to get baptized. And uh, then I went home that day and sat on the couch and tried to light a cigarette. Mm -hmm. I tried to draw back on it, and that was it. I couldn't draw back on it. The Lord took away well, the all design. smoking. Yeah, he took it away straight away. Wow. And I That's haven't smoked since, and that was, that was when I was 28. Wow. Changed my whole life. Um, Did you get baptised? Yes. That's when I stopped smoking. I was baptised. Yeah. Yeah. 
couldn't smoke again. Were they a spirit-filled church? They were indeed, yeah. Yes. You got filled with the Holy Ghost as well? No, I have a funny story about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I was now working in a different place. Yes. Uh, and Canberra was surrounded by fires. Mm -hmm. We had fires all around us. And uh, I went to work because I was a diligent worker. I wasn't worried. And I got to work and I was working in a bakery at that time. And the, it was a Sunday and the head baker said to me, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't be here. You, your house is under threat. I was renting in another place. Your house is under threat. You need to go home. I said, no, I'm here to work. I've driven all this way. I'm here to work. I'm happy to work. No, 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 you need to work. And she said, oh, I'm going to talk to the manager. Yeah. I spoke to the store manager and said, oh, Simon's not going to work. He's going to go home. I said, no, no, I'm here to work. She said, no, go home. Hmm. So I did. I went home to the church in yep. Elconnon yep. on the days of fire and I had the pastor and son pray for me and uh, repent of a couple of things. And the days of fire I was baptised with fire <laughs> uh, in a powerful way that I couldn't stop praying in tongues. So every constantly, constantly. Yeah. So that was an incredible moment. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I remember the nights that we had the fires in Canberra. I was driving back from Queanbeyan, which yeah. is across the border, and uh, I had some. I'd bought some groceries, and uh, the borders were blocked. I couldn't get across, and I thought, oh well, there's fire there. I could see the fire. Yeah, and I thought, oh well, I can just cook what I've got <laughs> on the fire, and they let me through, and uh, got back and yeah, helped helped a little bit. Yeah, because where where I was renting uh, right across there was a paddock and uh, it was just on fire everywhere. Yeah. Wow. Mm. When did you meet uh, Geraldine? Uh, Geraldine, I met here, yes. Okay, so you're still in Canberra. Do your parents know that you're being saved and you are changing, your brothers, sisters? I think they could see and hear So you still meet up on. with them? Yes, I'd still fly here and come for a month so or two. They, they moved here? Who was yeah. left in Canberra? Just, uh, just me. Okay. Just me, yeah. So I uh, had some friends in Canberra that were praying. That so you're still doing the pastry cooking? Uh, no. So at this time I'm working at Woolies in, just as a baker's assistant. Mm -hmm. And I uh, went through a tragic time there. So I was uh, married for a day. Uh, the woman I was married to was a con, con woman. Uh, my family were sort of aware, but I didn't catch on. I was pretty thick, blind, and uh, completely blindsided. It devastated and, and Christian at the time. Well, she, she pretended to me. But you were? I was, but I didn't know the Lord's So voice. where did you meet her? Uh, at work, so when I was with the Health Insurance Commission, and she set her eyes on a target. And uh, then... What was she seeking? Uh money, uh, whatever she could get. She destroyed me to the point of bankruptcy. And uh, But did you have property? Did you have something? No, no, I, thankfully I didn't have anything. But financially she just took everything and was set about to destroy my heart and destroy my soul. Was she Australian or what was she? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you met at, at Woolies working together? Oh, no, I met at uh, Health Insurance Commission okay. in the government. And then, uh, yeah, it was an interesting situation but uh, was she christian she pretended to be pretended christian. to be she knew the talk so she was at church with you and everything for a little while and mm -hmm. then said well i'm not going this place is uh weird it's uh i want you to go somewhere else so she was trying to separate me okay. from everyone and everything and then you asked her to marry you ah uh, yes stupidly because you know, she just set her eyes on me and i thought well you know, I did. Mm -hmm. And when I, back then, when I've made a commitment, I follow through. And I remember being at Woolies one time, cleaning the big colander, and I heard a voice, which I didn't understand. I didn't understand yeah. at the time. Three times I heard the Lord say, leave her. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going on. I thought I was losing it. 
but he was warning me of the things to come. But uh, it was heartbreaking, devastating. Uh, the next day she moved out with another so you, guy. So you got married. Yeah. Family flew, flew across. You had a wedding in Canberra. Yeah, mum and dad flew across. Um, and then she said, started to try and separate me from my mum and dad and destroy that relationship. But uh, praise God, I've got a loving mother that was the backbone and she really supported me and helped me. So you got married and then she left the next day or? Yeah, she moved in with another guy that she was trying to get to be my best man. It was due a huge compensation payout. So she moved in with him and uh, I ended up having a breakdown. So I was quite big um, and then in two weight, weeks. Weight wise. Weight wise, yeah, two weeks. I, I just lost it. I couldn't really eat. I did a lot of running. I was running all the time, uh, feeling like I was being chased. And I ended up losing a lot of weight. So I went back to work. Yeah. And I was in a bigger pants. So I was about 96, I think. And we had white pants for the bakery. Uh, I tried to put them on. And <laughs> they just fell around my ankles. Yeah. Uh, there was a, the skinniest guy there. He was wearing a 62. And I put those pants on and they just fit. Yeah. And uh, the, I remember one of the ladies that bagged the bread and did everything else, she said to me, if I didn't know you, I'd think you were a drug addict because mm. I just lost so much weight in such yeah. a short time. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting times there. But, uh, Very interesting. God brought me through it. Thankfully. Wow. So what brought you here? You just came to visit your parents? Uh, yes, or you so, wanted to move? Uh, no, I didn't want to move. So um, my dad was terminally ill. And Cancer? He, or? Uh, he had, like mesothelioma, it was uh, aviolitis. So his lungs turned to honeycomb. And whenever he'd get an infection, more would die off. And he said, okay, um, you need to come. Uh, I'm ready to go. So we all flew, Andrew flew in from, my brother, yeah. he flew in from Hong Kong and I flew. Uh, that was over an Easter weekend mm -hmm. and I stayed for a bit longer. And he picked up, he just picked up. He, he was an amazing mm -hmm. man. And uh, so I stayed an extra week and then he was okay. So flew back and I remember a month or two months later, mum, I was talking to mum on the phone. She said, oh, have you thought about moving? I said, yeah, I have. I've thought about moving. Mm. I'm not moving. <laughs> and then about a week later, I remember serving a customer. I was in a Medicare office, looking around the office, and I thought, what am I doing here? And I thought, no. You were working for Medicare at the time. Yeah, and I thought, what am I doing here? I need to get over to Perth. Yeah. So I spoke to the uh, manager and the branch manager, and I said to him, how do I get over to Perth? He said, well, you can send an email to these people, make a call, uh, and see if there's anything available. Mm -hmm. So I rang, I rang, and everyone said, no, there's no jobs in Perth. So I went home that night, and I prayed. I said, Lord, uh, I need to get to Perth. Yeah. I need to be with my mum and dad. Um, I need a job in journal up. That's the branch I want to be at because it was close to mum. Yeah. And the very next day, I'm on my lunch break. And the ten, the manager, uh, acting branch manager, came in and said, "Oh, I just had a phone call. Hmm. Oh, I guess who it was from." I said, uh, "I don't know. You tell me." I knew who it was from. I felt it in my spirit. Yeah. She said that was June up. They said they've got a job for you, and wow. they want you to start. So I rang them up because it's federal government, so they would have had offices here. Yes. Yeah, definitely. But June up was the most sought after branch because mm -hmm. it was the furthest branch north. And I rang the branch manager there and she very gratefully, graciously offered me a job. And I said, okay, I'll, I organised to come over and meet everyone. Was it a promotion or a demotion? No, it was just straight across. APS 3, just, 4, whatever level you were on. Just straight across. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, I had two weeks to find a place to live. Yeah. The very last week. But they helped you move. They paid for you to move. And no, 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 I did all that. Okay. Yeah, I was happy to just come. Yeah. It was a sideways transfer. Yeah, nice. Um, 
Yeah, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. And I got an extra seven years with my dad. Well, <coughs> that's amazing. Yeah, and it was, I got to spend a lot of, a lot of time with him and that was wonderful. And he got to see me get married to Geraldine. How did you meet Geraldine? Uh, there was a Cornerstone Church. So funny thing is when... Um, so when you moved here, you went to church, you found the church? A yeah, because mum, someone had been praying, one of my friends had been praying and I used to come to a church here, Victory Life. Mm -hmm. uh, my mum actually suggested, why don't you have a look at this church? Nice. And uh, so I went and had a look and she'd drop me off on Sundays when I'd come on holidays. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't want to go there anymore. I just felt, no, it's not for me. I want to go somewhere else. So mum had researched and found a church for me and found Cornerstone. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'll try that. And uh, so I went there. And, uh, yeah, then one day Geraldine walked in the door and I knew that she... She was God's blessing for me. And, wow. uh, but I waited a while before she talked to me and yeah, then proposed to her a little later on and uh, Dad was able to be at our wedding. It wow. nearly killed him and nearly it took a lot out of my mum because Dad's on oxygen, was on oxygen all the at time. At that time, yeah. Yeah, so mum was that trying to look him. after him and his oxygen ran out and but it was a beautiful time, it really was. It was yeah, just what God was. So doing. you married a Latino? Yeah, Chilean. So beautiful. Yeah. Best thing that's happened to me. Yeah. Next to Jesus. Of course. Yeah. So you've been married now, what, 15 Eight and years? a half years. Eight and a half years, okay. Was she married before as well? Or she no, was no, she wasn't. But, uh, yeah, she wasn't sure about me until uh, much later on. So. Yeah, because I got a transfer from Whitford's. Yeah. Uh, sorry, from Joondalup. I They asked me to do a special project at uh, Whitford's. Mm -hmm. And Geraldine was working at Whitford's and ran into her one lunchtime. And she said, oh, we should catch up and have lunch. And So you, you know, met at church and now you're meeting at Whitford's? Yes. Wow. And said, well, you know, she was thinking, oh, this is a lovely Christian friend I can have. Yeah. And we had a lovely time. We, we'd share about the Lord and share about what he's done in our hearts and in our lives and our journey. And we just had a friendship. And, uh, yeah, 10 months later, I, we got, I proposed to her 10 months. Oh, no, 10 months later she talked to me. And then uh, we got engaged the following Easter Saturday. Yes. And then married a year and a half later. Too long. But, uh, wow. Yeah. Nice. No children? No children. Um, and what field are you working in at the moment? You're working for DVS? Uh, Department of Transport with the government. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's great. And Geraldine, she's... Uh, with the Health Fund. Yeah, PGF. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And I used to be Medicare, so she was public, I was private. Oh, sorry, she was private, I was public. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and you are obviously journeying uh, with the Lord and uh, strongly prophetic, both of you. Definitely, yes. Yeah, Lord How just, did you step into that? The Lord, just, the Lord just blesses us and speaks through us, uses us. Yeah. It's beautiful. Have you been into missions or uh, ministry outside, you know, the four walls? Uh, prayer ministry. Yeah. So, and I used to, uh, have, I helped a lot of people with um, mental illness, mm -hmm. uh, suffering from it from myself previously. Yep. Uh, having severe depression and anxiety and things. Uh, there are a lot of people that I took out because I remember when I was suffering through that issue, uh, people had come alongside me and they'd take you out for a coffee or whatever. So I met a lot of people and used to minister to them. And Are you healed? Healed from depression, I was, uh, but it crept back. Oh. Some things creep back at times. So sometimes you get a little bit low, but it's certainly nothing like it used to be. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was healed, uh, I went to a John Miller uh, meeting at Victory Life and he said anyone suffering from depression come up the front. He didn't pray for anyone, didn't lay hands on anyone. Uh, I just felt like a sack under my heart just explode mm. Wow! as I sat down in the chair. And uh, from that point I was healed for about seven years. Amazing. But things 
creep up and attacks and uh, yeah sometimes you do have low points yeah but certainly doing a lot better than I ever have been. Who's stronger emotionally and mentally you or Geraldine? Oh we're both a support to each other yeah yes she yeah. has she does she understand what you've gone through with uh, depression definitely yes has she had it as well or she suffered her battles as well and mm. uh, but we've been through a lot together and yeah. uh, we've supported each other through it and through it we've become a lot stronger yeah and our love just thrives it's still like i met her just yesterday and <laughs> we just got married you haven't spoken about your eye your accident uh, yeah, I won't share about that. That was a deeply traumatic experience. Mm. But, uh, yeah, the Lord supported me through that. So, yeah, it was a hard adjustment for the family. Yeah. And Were you young? Uh, no. So I was only in my 30s. Yeah. Before you got married to a child? Children, in, yeah. Mm -hmm. In Canberra or here? In Canberra. Yeah. Was it more of a car accident or what? Uh, no, no, it was a traumatic experience. So, yeah. But, uh, if you don't want to share. No, no, it was it's something that is pretty traumatic. And, yeah. But through it, uh, the Lord blessed me and opened new doors. Mm. Yeah, it was an attack from the enemy and... Uh, Things were happening when I was working in the bakery in Woolies. There was a small community behind in uh, bed sitters that um, the just fibro mm -hmm. places that uh, yeah I met up with a lot of people there and became part of their lives. Uh, mm. Be ministering to them at lunchtime and it was a powerful time. Mm. It's amazing what the Lord was doing. What do you feel the Lord's got next for you? I'm excited. Yeah. I'm really excited. The Lord's just opening doors. Yeah. Uh, challenging us and stretching our faith. So uh, certainly something that the Lord does work in through Geraldine and I, uh, Holy Spirit, yeah, we're, as you said, we're, we work in the prophetic, uh, also healing ministry. Uh, but I think... Yeah, we've been asked to start a podcast. I think you heard about that. And um, uh, just with, Paul was mentioning yesterday because uh, I um, <laughs> I said to him, "Wouldn't it be great to do a couples to couples podcast?" <laughs> I, I said that to him, and he, he said, "I think Chris and Geraldine and and uh, they're talking about something like that." Yes. I said, "Oh well, there you go." You know, because. <laughs> yeah. I had my 50th birthday, as you know, and um, when I looked, I spoke, I thought, you know, we should do something, you know, to invite other couples in. And then I've heard that you guys were on the same tangent, and um, yeah. there you go. Wow. Well, go for it. You know? Yeah. And it's something that we've been blessed with because we love to minister to others, just sharing Jesus' love. Mm. That's all it is. And we're not interested in a name for ourselves or big noting or promotion all we're interested in is the heart of the father and yeah. just to love upon others That's and right. so when when does this start uh soon so there'll be a release date soon where yeah, have you recorded any not yet will it be done live or have you thought about that is uh, it live or is it pre-recorded it'll uh, pre be pre-recorded to start with and then go live so yeah, like both video uh, and audio or just video or uh, just video just video, video and audio yeah and uh, yeah because that our heart is really to see others blessed in their marriages like the lord's blessed us yeah and it's amazing what he's done in our hearts yeah and when before we got married uh i knew we were going to get married yeah. Before I'd even propose. So mm -hmm. we'd look for a house together and say, look, this, do you like this one? And we found the right house. And it's been hard times where we've had $2 in the bank at one time. Mm. And Geraldine's looking at me saying, what are we going to eat tonight? <laughs> and when I, when I moved into the house, because Geraldine yeah. didn't move in until after we were married, of course, and uh, mum had asked me, how are things going? You know, because I'm paying the mortgage on my own and the yeah. bills. 
I've never owned a house or anything. Yeah. The Lord just opened the door. And uh, I had nothing. I was from bankruptcy from my ex-wife. She signed the papers and did everything. Uh, a lot of... Forging. In, yeah, a lot of stuff. So uh, she said, you actually went bankrupt? Yeah. Did you have debts? Why, why would you go bankrupt? Because there was no, no debts. Because she controlled me. Controlled my life pretty much. Okay. And my bank and my finances. And uh, yeah... I, have, I can't even imagine what I went through with it. But, uh, you know, and I thought, oh, I've got no money. And then come here, I was able to buy a house. And uh, mum would say, how are you doing? I said, oh, everything's good. I'm eating lobster once a week or once a fortnight. I wasn't, but that was just a thing to say, yeah, I'm doing yeah. well. Yeah. And we had $2 in the bank, knock at the door. Our next door neighbour, he was great. Yeah. He was a bikey and uh, <laughs> he was a great guy. He said to me, oh, um, do you like lobster? Well, uh, I said, what? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. I said, yeah, we love lobster. So he went in and he gave us two fresh crays mm. straight off the boat. Wow. And I said to Geraldine, I shared her that, with her that story. Yeah. And I said, see, things aren't that bad. We're eating lobster. Yeah. So it was God just saying, you know, everything's all right. I'm gotcha. looking after you. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, he's always looked after us and always provided. Mm. Uh, next chapter is amazing. We're excited about what he's doing. and uh, Anything else apart from um, this? What's this podcast called? Uh, it's going to be Covenant Couples. Covenant Couples. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It is, uh, we, went to, uh, we went down to Medora Bay uh, about four weeks ago, and yeah. you can just see the Lord directing us into that. Wonderful. And, uh, yeah. I'm excited for the next chapter. That's great. And I'm loving what I'm doing at the moment, you know. Yeah. Uh, at Cornerstone, I was uh, taught how to use the mixing desk. Yes. Uh, I had no idea. I love sound and uh, the technical parts of it. And I was trained up by a great guy there and uh, taught me the ropes. Yeah. And uh, You're stepping in here. I, know. I love it. It's great. And I'll train someone up as well. Oh, wonderful. I've already got that. Well, we'll still go digital. Mm. That's going to probably be even better. That'll be really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story and just, um, you know, taking us on that journey where you've been and how far you've gotten. And uh, we're excited about the next chapter as well, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Well, what a beautiful story, what an amazing journey. Um, I'm sure you, you've learned a lot from Simon, from his story and from his uh, ups and downs in life. You know, I don't know what you're going through or some people in your life are going through. Just know that you can always come back to the Lord. And there is restoration and there is a way out and uh, there is a way forward and there is hope. And God will use you just as God is using them and will use them in the next chapter as well. Uh, we'd really love it if you could share this content with other people who um, you know. Social media, obviously we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and many, many other platforms, YouTube, of course. Uh, feel free to share this. Uh, give us five stars, you know, give us some comments. And, uh, yeah, let's just enjoy this journey. We look forward to seeing you next week at Kingdom Stories from Down Under. My name is Nathaniel Costia. Thank you for joining us on Kingdom Stories from Down Under. We'd love it if you would subscribe, rate and share these stories with your wider community. And remember, every story is worth sharing, including yours.